Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello there. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with the brain whisperer, Stephen Campbell. Stephen, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Stephen. So normally we, we lead in with something and then you go and you help us. But this is going to be dealer's choice. What's up? Okay. What's Let's up, talk Stephen? About- Let's talk about Max, Maxwell Maltz and psychocybernetics. That sounds oh, really yeah, weird. Yeah. Really Something weird, simple. but let's talk about him. Cool. Maxwell Maltz was a uh, plastic surgeon, educated back east, began his practice back in the 1950s. He specialized in female facial reconstruction. So burns, injuries, etc. When he began his practice, he noticed something in many of his patients. So you would have a person with a very, very bulbous nose. And they would come in. Can you fix it? Absolutely. They would do the surgery. The wraps would come off. Of course, there's healing there, but it was obviously a successful. And more often than not, the patient would say, see, I told you it wouldn't work. They could not see any change. Over and over and over until finally, Dr. Maltz said, there's something else going on here. Because the surgeries are successful. And they are not seeing it. He realized they were not seeing it, not because of what was going on up here, but because of what was going on in here. That young girl said, I have been ugly all my life. And when she saw herself in the mirror with the nose that looked absolutely beautiful, she said to herself, it didn't work. And Dr. Maltz realized, you know what? She needs some coaching. She needs some counseling. And he gave that to her. And they finally said, wow, I look great. But this happened over and over and over and over. Why? Because we see ourselves as a certain way. And we tell ourselves how we see ourselves. And the brain's believing it. So what I want to talk about today is what we lock out of our lives even when we're not aware of it. There is a picture which if you Google, type in old lady, young lady. And I use these in my seminars. It's a picture of an old lady and a young lady, but they're both there. The old lady's looking down, you can see her nose, you can see her chin, you can see her eye. But the young lady is also there. She's looking over her right shoulder, you can see her choker, you can see her eyelash, and they're both there. But when the picture comes up, I say to my audience, who do you see? Some people see the old lady, some people say the young lady. And then when I tell them they're both there, they look at it very closely and they see it. What happened psychologically? When the picture came up, when they saw the old lady, they locked out the young lady. If they saw the young lady first, they locked out the old lady. But when I observed, they are both there, that opened up their brain, and they looked, and lo and behold, they saw both. And now whenever say they see this picture again, no matter how old they are, they'll be able to see both. That's called the lock-on, lock-out principle. We'll start with the sad news. We'll end with the good news. Here's the sad part. When you lock on to, I cannot do that. You lock out, I can. See what I said? Let me say that more clearly. When you lock on to, I can't. You lock out, I can. That's the really sad part because so many people do that. 
they lock onto, I just cannot do this. The brain believes what we tell it, and the brain says, yes, you're right, then make sure you can't. Here's the other one. When you lock onto, I can, what do you lock out? I cannot. They can't both be there. So when you lock on to, I can do this, do you know what your brain does? It finds a way. Wow. I taught math at the University of San Francisco. I'll never forget a student that came to my office after the first day of class. Sat down. She was very shy. She said, Mr. Campbell, I'm so glad you're my professor. You know what? Because I'm a C student in math. What do you mean, Sue? She said, I have never gotten above a C in a math test. I'm a C student. So I worked with her. She got an A in the first midterm. I gave her the test, and she absolutely freaked out. She said, <gasps> and then she said to me, oh, Mr. Campbell, this is a mistake. What do you mean, Sue? She said, I have never gotten above a C in a math test. You must have made a mistake. And I said, I didn't, Sue. This is a genuine A. I'll never forget this. Then she looked at it longer, and then a big smile just creased over her face. And she said, do you know what this means? And I said, I do, Sue, but I want you to tell me. This means, Mr. Campbell, that when I flunk the next test, I can still maintain my C. I said, Sue, just get an A in every test. She said, oh, I can't. Why? What was her answer? I'm a C student. I have a bulbous nose. I've always been this way. This is what I can't do. And what does her brain say? You're absolutely right. However, when you begin to choose to replace, don't word change, replace, what you're saying with positive stuff that you choose to make, your brain says what? Oh, okay. Is it true? I don't even care. All I care about is what you tell me. Let me ask you a question. I've said this in other presentations. When did your old life end? You know what it ended? It ended exactly one second ago. Your old life just ended one second ago, which means when did your new life begin? One second ago. Now do the math. 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour, 24 hours per day. In one 24-hour period, you have 86,400 new opportunities for a new life every single day. And your brain listening to you let me illustrate that, and I do this in my class. I'm going to show you how powerful your brain really is. At the count of three, I want you to stretch, but not just a nice, polite stretch. I mean really stretch. And then at the peak of the stretch, I want you to say, I'll say this with you, I am really tired. Okay? So one, two, three, ready? One, two, three. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Now yawn. Now say, I am really tired. Close your eyes. Hands down in your lap. I am really How tired. How do you feel? I've had people fall asleep. I've had people <laughs> begin to snore in my class. Because they said to themselves, I am really tired. When I met Mary, I had been single for 24 years of my life. We walked down the aisle of this teeny little church up in the mountains. And this person in front of me said, I now pronounce you mountain wife. That's a one-time affirmation said by somebody else. When I kiss my wife, I had a married mindset for the rest of my life when I still have it. Because when he said it, I said it. And every day, 
We get closer. Is it like this? Of course not. And sometimes it got really crazy, but we made the decision that we have a married mindset and the brain said, okay, that's so exciting. So what do I want to leave with you today? Your brain listens to you more than anybody else. In fact, the part of your brain that records what others are saying to you is the same part that's recording what you are saying to yourself. Don't miss that. Say this again. The part that's recording what others are saying to you is the same part that's recording what you're saying to yourself. You have the choice to replace the negative stuff with positive. The negative stuff locks out stuff that could be in your life. The positive brings that stuff in. You lock on to I can, you lock out, I cannot. I'll never forget one time when I was on my way to work and I was waiting for the light to change and a kid came up to me in a very, very fancy car. He looked at me, I looked at him, my little Toyota and the light changed. He went peeling in front of me, roaring up the freeway, passing everyone with his brand fancy new car. And as I watched him passing everyone, I had this epiphany. How many cars were right in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? Millions. So maybe it's not a matter of how fast you are getting there. Maybe it's a matter of you're going in the right direction. But you know what? Even in the right direction, sometimes we just run out of gas. Sometimes we get a flat tire. Sometimes we even lose our way. But you know what? <laughs> you can buy some more gas. You can replace the tire. You can get a map. And what's so wonderful about the brain is the whole time is just saying, oh, okay. Is it true? I don't even care. All I care about is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock on to it, you know what I will do. I will do everything I can to make it true in your life. That's exciting. Lock on to the good and lock out the bad. Your choice yep. every day and all day long. Yep. And we have the choice. That's great. Thank you. Well, that was really, I, I'm, I like that deal with choice. Done well. <laughs> yeah. 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 And your brain listens to you. That's what's so wonderful. Brain listens. Brain, oh, okay. Yes, you're right. You're the boss. People don't think that. They think, no, how I was born and what I was raised, what I looked like. No, no, no. Yeah. It's what you say about how you were born, what mm -hmm. you say about how you were raised, what you say about what you look like. That's the boss. You decide. And, and, you determine. And, Stephen, we do tend to believe others. If somebody says something negative to us, we have to fight that. We have to, That's right. We don't want to believe the negative. That's right. right? But you so know if we what? hear somebody say it about us, we have to make sure we're not saying it. We're not rather repeating than, it. Rather than itself. fighting it, just disagree in your mind. You don't have to call them up and, you know, get into their face. Just say to yourself, you know what? Nope. Not me anymore. I'm growing. I'm changing. I'm learning. Yeah. Not me. Brain says, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. But here's the exciting. It doesn't just stop there. It looks for ways to make what you are saying true. So another story, when our daughter wanted to go to USF, we were very excited, but USF is very expensive. So on a Sunday night, we got together as a family, and we said, okay, we got to figure out a way for Sarah to get into USF and get the money and all this sort of stuff. But we locked onto it. We did an affirmation. The next day I was going to work, I noticed a sign on the freeway, USF, right in my old backyard. Santa Rosa, I had no idea. 
make a very, very long story short, I ended up teaching at USF for 10 years all over the Bay Area, Sacramento, San Francisco, etc. And it paid for my daughter's education. It also paid for mine. Why? Because on the way to work, the brain was looking for a way to make this true. When it saw that sign, it said, there it is, Steve, five miles from where you live. And I got an interview, and the rest is history. Wow. Brain finds a way. It finds yeah. a way when you lock onto it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. wonderful, wonderful thank stuff. You. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you really again. Is. And um, we look forward to our next conversation. Wonderful. So why don't we just keep going? Too. No, we're going we're gonna to stop so that people can digest <laughs> this. And then we're going to come back. So there are going to be chapters and chapters and chapters of The Brain Whisperer. And That's right. uh, I love it. Uh, this is uh, one, uh, one of my favorite times uh, is a uh, oh, all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Thank you. My favorite time, too. I really enjoyed this. We'll see you again soon, Steve. Okay. Bye-bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.